Hi friend, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to look at the importance of studio monitors, how to set them up properly in your home studio, and even how professional mix engineers use them. We'll also look at some of the very best entry level monitors that will improve your skills and shorten the amount of time it takes for you to make pro sounding music. Let me know in the comment section below what you're using for monitors and if you like them, or what you're looking for if you're still trying to decide on which ones to pick up. If you like this and want to see even more great tips on how to transform your musical ideas into complete professional sounding songs, head to my website, electronicmusictips.com, using the link below, and pick up my free six-step guide on how I create a song from start to finish that's chock full of amazing tutorials and tips. And don't forget, hit like and subscribe to the channel. It only takes a second. It may seem unnecessary to say, but a lot of people get confused about what the purpose of mixing is, and a lot of online mixing advice really has nothing to do with actual mixing. A mix is the final two-track form of a production that presents the left and right channel from a recording of a musical performance. A great mix is one that brings a great song arrangement and performance to its fullest potential, made to connect with the listener, which conveys an emotional reaction designed to provide the listener with a desired experience. A successful mix starts with a great song, which is then arranged well and ideally recorded well, making a great mix even possible. In order to pull off a great or even good mix, you have to make decisions that enhance the material in a way that brings the listener's focus to elements of the song and provides interest and movement as the song progresses. Making these mix decisions is only possible if you have the right space and monitors to hear the material properly. These decisions not only have to sound good on your setup, but everywhere else. How your mix sounds outside of your room is called translation, and your mix should translate on as many playback systems as possible. Balancing your bass and giving it the right energy means you should mix at higher volumes to help you create better decisions when dealing with the low end. Try mixing your low end at 85 decibels for brief periods of time. Our hearing is relatively flat at this level and you can listen at this level for some time without causing damage to your hearing. Make sure not to exceed 100 decibels and definitely don't listen at these volumes all day. Monitoring at different levels is super beneficial for translation, even more so than referencing on different monitors once you're experienced enough and know how your monitors translate. If you're just starting out, using multiple monitors will greatly help your decision making and allow you to reference your mix translation quickly and efficiently without leaving your room. Low end and high end frequencies respond differently at different volumes, and it's important to adjust your monitoring level to best present the material you're focusing on to make your mix decisions. If your mix doesn't translate well to other systems, it may be because your room is interfering with your ability to hear the music properly, which is affecting your ability to make good mix decisions. For example, if your room doesn't manage the low end frequencies well, you'll mix the song with too little bass and it'll sound unbalanced when you play it back on other systems. The effect your room has during monitoring will have an equal but opposite effect on your mix during translation. A room with little to no acoustic treatment will interfere with your ability to make mix decisions that will translate well outside of your room. There's lots of information online regarding room treatment, and a lot of it is fucking nonsense. Do some research and look online at professional rooms for ideas on how to treat your room and find inexpensive alternatives for materials and design. Stay away from egg cartons and anything that looks like them. So now let's talk about monitors. Monitors come in three different styles, with some designs being a hybrid between two styles. The styles are called big, midfield, and near field monitors. With each style, there are either active or passive monitors. The active monitors are self powered and come with an amplifier that's specifically matched to the speakers and the best option for home studios. Passive monitors allow the buyer the option of selecting their own amplifier, making it easier for a big studio to tweak their system. 
The big monitors are the soffit mounted ones that you see in the studio control rooms that cost as much as a used car. A large build out is required for these ones and they're flush mounted inside the wall on either side of the mixing desk. If you have to ask, they're out of reach for most of us and that's okay. They're not necessary for home mixing. Midfield monitors are, the, as the name suggests, between the bigs and the near field monitors. Usually having a 10 to 15 inch woofer to represent the low end. They're designed to be placed at six to eight feet from your listening position, allowing for the larger sound waves in the low end to develop. Near field monitors are the smallest of the three and are the best option for when you're just starting out. Many near field designs offer a flat response that'll allow you to accurately listen in a well-treated room. Near fields are typically built with a six to eight inch woofer and are designed to sit on the bridge of your console. <laughs> Who are we kidding? Likely your desk. Near field monitors are known for accentuating the mid range because of their lack of low end, allowing you to critically hear what's working in your mix as well as where there's problems. The Yamaha NS10s were industry standard monitors for decades because of their reliable sound and many professionals swore by them. There are many better options than the discontinued NS10s today and also at uh, various price ranges. It's worth buying the best monitors you can afford at the time, but never miss meals just to buy something that's out of reach. Starving isn't sexy and doesn't promote good creative habits when you're worried about when your next meal is coming from. A rule of thumb is your monitors should be spread as far apart as they are from you in the listening position. So if you're four feet back from the monitors, start with the monitors spread four feet apart, making an equilateral triangle between you and each monitor. If the monitors are too close together, the stereo image is going to be smeared. And if they're too far apart, you won't have that sweet spot in your listening position. Try placing your monitors 67 and a half inches apart from tweeter to tweeter, pointing the speakers just behind your head so the bass frequencies have a chance to unfold. Make sure the correct angle is set, again, so that the speakers are pointing to just behind your head in the listening position. This will increase the definition between the instruments and reduce smearing of the stereo field as well. The angle can be adjusted to taste pointing to either directly at the listener or further back. Some mixers like the sound of the monitors pointing one to four feet behind them to reduce the hype of the sweet spot on louder monitoring systems uh, like the midfield monitors and uh, bigs. Monitors are designed to be used in the upright position during playback. This hasn't stopped people from turning monitors on their sides for playback either. If you're using monitors on their sides, have the tweeter on the outside, making the stereo field wider than if the tweeter is on the inside. Place the tweeter in line with your ears using isolating pads or legs if extra heights needed. These will help to decouple your monitors from your work surface and prevent unwanted vibrations. Work at a variety of levels when you're mixing, putting the level up to check out the low end, using a mid-level when you're checking EQs and effects, and doing the final balancing quietly. Start your mix by finding the four to five vocal tracks, listening at a decent level so you get excited by the energy and the feel of the tracks, and then lower the volume to a quieter working level to bring the other tracks up to a balanced volume, keeping the focal tracks louder and predominant in the mix. Balance these remaining tracks around your selected focal point tracks. Your working level should allow you to have a normal conversation without straining to talk over the music. It's at this speaking level that we can hear most articulately, a feature of a hundred thousand years of evolution as a language-based animal. Checking the low end at a higher volume will prevent you from adding too much bass as overcompensation tends to happen at lower listening levels. If you balance your levels at a low volume, They'll be more evenly balanced when you turn up the volume to check the low end and to balance the kick and the bass. Try checking your mix by walking outside of the mixing room. If you can hear all of the parts and they sound balanced, you're in the ballpark with your mix. 
It's much easier to listen critically when you're away from the listening position and away from all the meters. You'll know you're almost done a mix when you can't sit still and you start to dance in the chair. I use this as a guide every time. Well, that's it for today, friends. I hope you enjoyed this and found it super helpful. Don't forget to leave a comment and let me know what your favorite monitors are or which ones you're planning on picking up. And be sure to head to my website using the link below to get my free six-step guide. Bye for now, friend. Thank you.